Yes, Lord, we bless you. We worship you. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. And who you will always be. Have your way, O oh Lord, that your name will be glorified. In the name of Jesus Christ. O oh Kataba. You, oh Lord, e magasi katabari kana mama shikotobo, libogo sakatabari kana mama. We bless you, Lord. We worship you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. God bless you as you join us today. Please, can you share this on your walls? Invite your friends, families, everyone that is in your sphere because God is doing something here today. Amen. Can we do that in the name of Jesus Christ? Just begin to thank him wherever you are. Bless him for he is God. Thank him for life, for healing, for prosperity, for advancement, for the will of God. Lord, we bless you. Hallelujah. Magodorobo sakatababa. Makine meyikana mashikotobo. Lebaga sikatabarikotobo shokotobo. Remaga sakatabali kana mama ma. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord, for everything. In the name of Jesus Christ, we bless you, Lord. We worship you. We glorify. We adore you. We give you all adoration and honor. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. Yes, Lord. Share this on your wall. Just let's continue to share this. Oh, give him glory and adoration. Give him exaltation. Share it everywhere. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord, for life. Thank you for healing, for prosperity, for advancement. Oh, yes, Lord, we worship you. We give you all glory and adoration. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ, let your name be glorified, Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Today we are talking about generational God. I'm just going to take it easy. I want you to know that our God is a God of multiple generations. That's the way I just want to put it. Multiple generations. Like if God, oh yes, is speaking to a people, God is not just speaking to the people that are standing in front of him. The Bible says he knoweth the end from the beginning. So God operates the end from the beginning. Hallelujah. So every time there's an end with God, there is a beginning. And every time there's a beginning, there's an end. I just want you to see it that way. Yes, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord, we bless you. We worship you. Have your way, oh Lord. Can we just share this on our walls? Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for everything. Yes, Lord, we bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Amen. Have your way, O oh Lord. Have your way, Father. Have your way, Lord, for everything. Receive all exaltation and honor. How great you are. How great you are, O oh Lord. How great you are. You are greater than the greatest, and you are mightier than the mightiest. Worship him, for he is God. Give him exaltation, O Lord. Labogo sakataba. Rika nama shikotobo likaraba sakataba baba. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Begin to praise him for he is God. He's mightier than the mightiest. He is God all by himself. Generation will come and go. God will not change. He is the unchangeable changer. He remained the same. Heaven and the Bible say will pass away, but his word 
shall not be dragged to the mud. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord. We bless you. We exalt, we magnify you. We glorify, we adore you. Makotorobo shekete baba baba, rima gasi katabali koto shokoto bo, lebra gasi katabali kana mama mama, makina mayakata shokoto bo. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you, Lord. We worship you for you are God. We adore you. We glorify you. We exalt your holy name. Have your way, O Lord, for who you are, who you represent, and who you will always be. I want to pray with you right now. If you are sick in the body any form of your body, any part of you, anywhere, whether your friend, your family members, or maybe your son, your daughter, your husband or your wife, I want you to stand with them right now because we are praying. Let the healing power of God come upon you right now. Jesus said, and you shall receive power. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you, receive the power of the Holy Ghost right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, let it bring healing. If your heart is broken, God can heal your heart. Every broken heart receive healing right now. In the name of Jesus, everyone that is having pain in the body, whatever form of pain and affliction, let the power of God heal you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, every form of sickness or infirmity, today I stand with you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let the power of God come upon you in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. In the name of Jesus, receive your healing right now. It is well with you. It is well with your spirit. It is well with your family. It is well with your sons and your daughters. It is well with your fellowship. It is well with you right now. Receive it. Let the God of gods and the King of the kings, let the power of powers, the one that has all ability, begin to release you right now. The blessings of God in your life, it shall make you rich and there shall be no sorrow added to it. Today, you have received life and life that you receive is the light of God. It will shine every part of you. It will shine in every place in your life. It will shine in every community. And the Bible says, darkness cannot, will not, shall not comprehend it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to pray with those of you that are business people, people that are doing something that is putting some resources in your life. God is going to in touch those things that you do. Whether you are working for somebody in a job or you are working for yourself in a business, God is incubating it because the Bible says God told man be fruitful. And I pray for everything that is committed to your hand to begin to receive fruitfulness. Whether you are working for somebody or you're working for yourself, let fruitfulness come upon you right now. Receive fruitfulness in everything. Lord, we are grateful for what you have done, the harvest, but we ask for fruitfulness. Let their life begin to multiply. When God gives you fruitfulness, it shall also affect your spiritual life. You will begin to grow from strength to strength. Uh, the ability of God is increasing upon you right now. Let everything that is committed to your hand multiply. In the name of Jesus Christ. Rebogo, rakatara, rikana mamama. In the name of Jesus, receive power that will bring increase in all that you do. Thank you, Lord, for it is done now. It is done now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to pray with you for everyone that has been afflicted. The Bible says affliction cannot will not, shall not rise the second time. Affliction from powers of the old, from ancient authorities, affliction from demonic forces. Every negative affliction that is coming upon you, that have been upon you, that is being sent to you or your family members. Today we pray, that the power of God will begin to root out. I speak unto you right now, receive the Holy Ghost. Let every demonic force be cast out, every vec heck spirit, authorities from the old, ancient powers, every power from the marine, I call against you right, right now by the authority and the power in the name of Jesus. Lose them and let them go. Let every man and woman that hear the sound of my voice receive the divine healing from God. Be healed from every demonic oppression. Be healed from every force. Be healed from everything that the enemy has brought upon you right now. In the name of Jesus, you are coming out. 
successful. Thank you, Jesus. Man of God, God bless you for being encouraging to all that we have been doing. And the Lord shall multiply your ministry. Amen. God bless you, Apostle. Hallelujah. Today we are talking about generational God. Lord, we take authority over these airways. We take authority over the byways, the freeways, the corner street. We take authority over the seaways. We take authority over the atmosphere, the city of Lilburn. We take authority over the county of Gwinnett, the state of Georgia, United States of America. We take authority. Right now we pray for this country, O oh Lord, that you begin to heal this land. Every death that has been caused by the weather, caused by the pestilence or by a plague caused by war. Everyone that is mourning, especially the family that lost their, their sons or their daughters. Last week, we pray for Kabul also in Afghanistan and every trouble spot in the world. We use Nigeria as a point of contact that Christians have been slaughtered and murdered in that nation and nobody is saying anything. People are looking away because Nigeria does not matter. But I want to say to you that you matter. God knows and have heard your cry. The Bible said, the Lord said, I have heard the cry of my people and I am come to deliver them. Now you go to Pharaoh, every spirit of Pharaoh in that land of Africa, in the land of Nigeria, all these lands, even in the United States of America, God said, let my people go. Every Pharaoh that is a demonic force or a, a, a activity in the spirit that is holding the children of God bound, loose them right now and let them go. Everyone that is incarcerated, justly or unjustly i pray for you right now that the power of god shall bring you out and if you have been guilty of any kind of crime you will begin to live a better life you will change and come out and be the who god have called you and if you have been accused wrongly today god shall vindicate you receive divine vindication right now in the name of jesus christ amen thank you jesus thank you holy ghost it is done. I just feel like praying and praying and praying. God is just bringing some things that we need to pray for. We are talking about a generational God, the God of yesterday, today, and forever. The God that was, that is, and that is to come. He is everything. The one that is eternity, the one that seared the end from the beginning. That is the God we are talking about. And we're talking about the God that manifests himself as the spirit as a son as a king he comes as a judge the god that has all ability we pray in the name of yeshua hamashiach jesus christ that you begin to understand the dimensions and the things that are meant for you even in your family everything that you have not seen or you have not received oh karaba sakataba concerning your family today the generational power and the generational god begin to come upon you in the name of jesus god bless you man of god in the book of Psalm 24, we start there this hour. In verse 1, the Bible says, The earth is the Lord, and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell in him. So God has everything. He has all ability and power. But look at verse 2 of Psalm 24. Say, for he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the flood. Of who shall ascend unto his hills? Of the Lord, who it's a question who shall ascend into the hills of the Lord or who shall stand in his holy place? It's a question that we must begin to answer today. He say in verse 4, he say, He that had clean hands and a pure heart, who had not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessings from the Lord and the righteousness from the God of all of his salvation. Look at verse 6. He said, this is the generation of them that seek him, that seek the face of Jacob. This is the generation of them that seek him. We are that generation. You know, many of us, we keep singing, oh, we are the generation. Yes, it is time for you to manifest that you are the generation that God is depending on. In this life that we have, God is depending on us as we are depending on God. It is something that we have to know how to understand and navigate to begin to see the move of God. He's a generational God. He's a God that has all power and ability. All and all is upon him. This is the generation of them that seek him. Are you one of those? He said, who shall ascend unto the hill of the Lord or who shall stand in his holy place? 
That's a question that we answer every day. Am I able to stand or ascend onto the hills of the Lord? But let's go further because I'm talking about God. Every man that you see in them has four generations. I'm going to, I'm going to just break it down a little bit. In Genesis chapter 12, God began to call a man. When God is talking to you, if you have been called out from your family, God is talking to your family. If you have been called out from your community, God is talking to your community. If you have been called out from your clan or tribe, God is talking to your tribe. If, if you have been called out from a country, God is talking to your whole country. God sees the man, God sees the family, God sees the generation. God sees four generations in one man. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, the Bible says, Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto the land that I will show thee. Now, this is the three place to get out from. Get out. God said, get out from thy country. Get out from thy father's house and get out from thy kindred. Get out from thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house. When you have done that, you are countryless, you are familyless, and you are kindredless. God wants us to depend on him. God is about to make something new in your life. God called this man, called Abraham, and said, get out. And the man got out. But God is looking at one man, but God is speaking to generations. He's a God of multiple generations. God does not do anything to one person. He does it generationally. That's why many of you that you are looking at yourself, some of us carry something from our ancestors. And some of us, our children, we carry something from us. Because that's the way God has programmed it. God began to say, get out, Abraham. I want to tie it to the generation. In verse 2, he said, I will make thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. I will make of thee a great nation. One man is a nation. When you are dealing with God, God is looking at you, but he's seeing what no man can see. I don't know where you are today. You have heard prophecies. You have heard things that God has spoken concerning your family. God has said something about your life. It is time for you to begin to execute it because you are coming out, not as yourself, but as a generation and as a co community, as a country, as a nation. Hallelujah. That's where you are coming out now. Marco Torobo, Lebaga Shikataba, Rebogo Soko Tobobobo. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. You Holy Ghost. But when Abraham got out, the Bible said, God said in verse 3, I will bless thee and bless, and I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curse thee. And in thee shall all the family of the earth be blessed. And Abraham departed as the Lord spoke unto him, and Lot went with him. And Abraham was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Now the man began to go walk, but God came back in verse 7, and the Lord appeared unto Abraham and said unto him, Thy seed, this man has no child. God is still keep telling him about children. God said to the man, Thy seed, thy seed. I don't know whether you, 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 you did you see that? The man has no child. God is talking about the seed. Unto thy seed, I will give this land. And they, they builded he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. God said, in this land, I will give it to your seed. This man has no child, but he believed God. And God began to take him to that dimension where he will become the person he has called I will give this land, this land. I don't know what land God has given to you and you have not really possessed them because you don't understand all the ins and outs. Today, receive that land. The first gift to man was the land in the Garden of Eden. When God called Abraham, he gave him a land. If you don't have any land anywhere in the world, receive a land today and let your eyes begin to understand that these are generational blessings. Land can be transferred. I'm telling you about generational God. It deals with man, it deals with the land, it deals with the community. It deals with the generation. It deals with the country. God is collective and one. So you have to, when God pick you out or is doing something in your family, don't think that it's all about you. It's about your generation. Even the children that are not born yet. God is talking to a man. He's talking to a seed that he has not seen. Say that seed shall come 
and possess this land. Your seed. Unto thy seed that we give this land. And then builded he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. Abraham put a lien on that land immediately and built an altar and dedicated it to God. But I want us to go further. Genesis chapter 15. This time there is no Isaac. Neither is there Jacob and the rest. The Bible says, and he said unto Abraham, Genesis 15 verse 13, know of surely that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs. They shall serve them and they shall afflict them 400 years. God is prophesying now. By this time he was talking to a man, but I'm telling you that he's a God of multiple generation. Four generation is in every man. God is telling him that his children will go into a foreign land and they will be there 400 years as servants. And if you read further, he will say, I'll bring them back to this land. By this time, there was no Isaac. Neither was Jacob even in existence. But God has seen the end from the beginning. Let your life begin to turn around today. Today. So whether Jacob like it or not, his destiny has been predestined. It has been planned by not him, not his father, by God Almighty. Many of you that are looking at me, hearing the sound of my voice, there are things that have been set for you. You just have to begin to walk in them. And the moment you begin to have the revelations about those things, it will begin to work for you. I told you that greatness can never be attained, but it must be revealed. When you get the revelation of greatness, you become great. It's a spiritual thing. The spiritual controls the physical. If you are listening to me, you have had resources or you will have resources. You will have it first in the spirit. It must be shown to you wherever you are going in the spirit, whether it is in the positive supernatural or the negative supernatural, everything about life is spirit. The spiritual controls the physical. For the Bible says the things that we see does not come from the things that do appear. That means they are coming from the things that are not in, in, in the physical realm. Now God is talking about generations that are not in existence at all, but he has seen them. He has created them. They are there in him. If you look at Exodus chapter 20, where he gave them the commandment as they were walking out, coming back home, the prophecy of them being in the wilderness, God fulfilled it here. As they were coming back home, there was a commandment that was given to them. The Bible said in Exodus 20, God was warning them in verse 3, he said, thou shalt not have other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any grieving image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven or that is in the earth, Bennett, or that is in the water under the earth. These are three dimensions of man's jurisdiction. I've said it in previous videos that we have talked, when God told man that you shall be have dominion over the fishes of the waters, sea, over everything that moveth upon the earth, and over the birds of the air. That's the three dimensions of man's scope of authority. The atmospheric, aquatic, and terrestrial. So God is repeating it here. Thou shalt not make any unto thee any grieving image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the waters under the earth. Thou shalt not bow thyself unto them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God but I want you to focus in verse 5 from after he said he was a jealous God. God said, visiting the iniquity of the fathers unto the children and unto the third and the fourth generations of them that hate me and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandment. That is where we are. We are among the generation that God has shown mercy unto and we shall continue to be merciful for because we are the generation that keep his commandment but what what why did i go there i told you that god is a generational god 
and God is a God, every man that God picks out, every man that God speaks to, every man that God begins to walk with, God is seen four generations in that man. Every man, whether you are a man, male or female, you have four generations in you. Whatever you do will affect four generations that you don't even know who they are. Oh, Bagasikataba. I want us to read it again. Exodus chapter 20, look at verse 5. <clears throat> from where God said, for I, the Lord, thy God, am a jealous God. So visiting the iniquities of the fathers unto the children, unto the third and the fourth generation of them that hate me. I've told you about the children of Abraham that we sin against God and they shall walk in a strange land for 400 years. Four generations. Four generations. Blessings goes up to that a thousand generation, but causes, lingers for four generations until somebody sets up and begin to seek God and seek his face. Things will begin to change. But I thank God for the caveat that God has put here. He said that he's going to have mercy in verse 6 and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. So if you are among, maybe you are the first or second generation and you discover that there's something that is wrong in your family and you begin to seek God and begin to keep his commandments, say mercy is for you. So that is where deliverance comes in. So for Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness and the house of Jacob shall begin to possess their possession. So if you're among the generations that is not right, I want you to consider your ways today. Come back home. Like the prodigal, every prodigal that is hearing the sound of my voice, I want you to come back home. God is going to embrace you with his open arms and restore you to the lost glory that is already in your family. God blessed every man that was created. Genesis chapter one verse 31 the bible said and god saw all that he created and it was good and god blessed them so you are good from beginning but there are some things that have crippled into your family some things have come in and alter the the the, the origin and the, the 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 way the family structure was originally structured and that does not mean that you should die there there is a way god said showing mercy to thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments, receive mercy today. In the name of Jesus Christ, in any form or way that you have asked for mercy, let the mercy of God come upon you. Receive it, for you are among the generation that love God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Oh, I am excited today. Look at Genesis chapter 26. The son of Abraham, Isaac, when there was famine in the land, Isaac was about to go to Egypt because of what his father did. And God appeared to him in verse 2. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down unto Egypt. Dwell in this land which I shall tell thee of. God says, Sojourn in the land and I will be with thee. I will bless thee for unto thee and unto thy seed. God is talking generational. He's talking to a man, but he's talking about other people. So when, whenever you receive the word from God, it's not just you. A word from God will change your life, but there are other people that are tied to that word. He said, and I will bless thee, for unto thee and unto thy seed I will give all these countries. I want you to see the word countries, nations. And I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of the heaven and will make give unto thee all these countries. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. The, the same prophecy was given to Abraham. God has repeated it to Isaac. And ask, find out what has been repeated in your family. Maybe you are the, the blessings that God have been saying in your family that it will come. And in your own time, it was fulfilled. Or if you are not, begin to pursue it because whatever has been told to your father is also for you. Hallelujah. But I want you to see something here. In that same Genesis 20, 26, 
when he told Isaac what to do, Isaac did. In verse 12, the Bible says, Isaac sold in the land and received the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. And the man was great and went forward and grew until he became very great. And for he had possessions of flocks, possessions of all these things he had. But the Bible says, and the Philistines envied him. But look at what happened in verse 24. And the Lord appeared unto him the same night and said, I am the God of Abraham, thy father. Fear not, for I am with thee. And I would bless thee and multiply thy seed for my servant Abraham's sake. God always, always have a reference point. He has promised Abraham something and he fulfills some of them in Isaac. He's going to move it to Jacob also and also do the same. That's why I tell you that God is a generational God. Every time you have received a prophecy, it is for you and it is for your generation. It is for your family. It is for your community. It is for your city. It is for your country. So God told Abraham to get out from his father's house, from his kindred, and from his country. Now God is blessing Abraham. Abraham is now gone. Is Isaac. God came back to Isaac and said, I am the God of thy father, Abraham. And God repeated the same promises he made to Abraham, to Isaac. Generation of God. Oh, Labagashi Kataba. Genesis 28. Now look at Jacob when he when he lied to his brother and uh, to, to his father and thought he got some blessing as he was running to go and stay in his mother's side. The Bible says in Genesis 28, verse 11, and he lived upon a certain place and tarried there all night. So he came to a place and, and stayed there and he found a stone and slept on that stone. In verse 12, the Bible says, And he dreamt, and behold, a ladder set up on heaven, on the earth. And to the top of it reaches to the heaven. And behold, the angel of God ascending and descending on it. Let the power to ascend come upon you. And the power to receive the descending grace come upon you also. God is going to take you into the Holy of Holies and bring you all of to the place of manifestation. Jacob saw this. Oh, Labaga Shikataba. Bible says in verse 13, and behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Isaac, the land whereon thou liest. To thee will I give it unto thy seed. God is talking generational. He said, Abraham, I will give you this and thy seed. Je Isaac, I will give you this and thy seed. Jacob, I will give you this and thy seed. It's a generational God. Oh, We know how it ended up. Jacob woke up and said, the Lord is in this place, but I knew it not. God began to tell him, thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth. And thou shalt spread abroad to the west, to the east, to the north, and to the south. And in thee, and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Look at what God gave Jacob the whole earth from there. Remember when God came to Abraham, Genesis 13, 14, he said, now Abraham, look from where you are, northward, southward, eastward, and westward. For all the land which thou seest, I will give to thee and thy seed forever. Now God is repeating, so Kanama Shikata Bababa, generation I called. Came back to not Isaac now, but his son Jacob. God is saying, you are, you are, Your seed shall spread to the north, which is America. They shall spread to the south, which is Africa, to the east, which is Asia, Middle East, and to the west, Europe. The four cardinal points of the whole world, God gave it to a man. Whatever blessing that is in the north, south, east, and west of your life, receive it now in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. But it didn't just end in the Old Testament. Jesus came and came with something, came with light. If you look at in John chapter 1, verse 4, it says, in him was life. And the life was the light of man. So Jesus was now just a life and a light, not for himself, but it's for us. Generation of God. And the light shined in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. 
Now, Jesus brought that light and gave it to us. And that light began to shine. Oh, yes, Lord. The light shineth in darkness. And the darkness cannot comprehend it. He said he was in the world and the world was made by him. Verse 10. And the world knew him not. Verse 12, he said, but as many that received him there, he gave the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe in his name. Hallelujah. Verse 14, and the word was made flesh and dwell among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of what? Grace and truth. So Jesus came grace and truth to us. Thank you, Jesus. In verse 16, and of his fullness have all we received and grace for grace. 17, for the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Generation are God, the God of all generations, Receive that power. Oh, Let God begin to transform your generation now. Transform your family. Transform you. In John chapter 10, verse 10 B, Jesus gave us his manual, what he came to do. He said, I am come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. Not just having one light, but it shall spread like wildfire receive the light of God because in him was life and the life was the light of men. Receive that light. Let light shine in you and shine in your generation. Let light transform you and your generation forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Oh, Labagashi Katabababa. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you and God begin to give us the scope of how we shall spread and you shall be witness unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea we must become territorial authorities and in Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth there must be territory that is in view when God is calling you. God cannot just call a man in isolation. God call you and call your family. Every time God is calling a man, he call, he's calling his generation. God calls a man, he calls his family. God calls a man, he calls his community. When I tell a man, I'm talking about both male and female. In us, is four generations. And God is speaking to everybody. So whatever God is doing in you, it is not for you only. What he's doing it for your generation. Receive the grace. The Bible says the generation of the upright shall be blessed. Psalm 112. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Receive it now. By the authority and the power in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the power of God come upon you. The power to be witness. The power to testify. The power to be above and, be, and, be, and beyond. The power to heal the sick. Jesus said, receive the Holy Ghost. Heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead. Red, let it come upon you right now. Everything that Christ brought was for us. The coming of Jesus Christ was not just for the Jews, nor for the Gentiles, for everybody. I told you God is a generational God. He releases himself to us. Romans chapter 8, look at verse 14. He said, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are called the sons of God. For he have not for you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba Father. The spirit itself beareth what witness unto our spirit that we are the children of God. Then look at verse 17 of Romans chapter 8. Then he said, And if children, then heirs, heirs of God. And join us with Christ. 
if so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be what? Glorified together. Jesus came for us to be glorified. He's a generational God. Oh, rabba, rabba, rabba. It is well with you today. It is well with your family. It is well with you. Oh, Labaga Shikata, where we are going to pray. But I need to show you something more. Galatians chapter 3, verse 26. He said, For you are all the children of God by faith in Christ. We are joined to Christ. He said, For as many of you as have been baptized unto Christ have put on Christ. Christ. We are wearing Christ. Like Christ is us. We are Christ. Christ is us. He said, there are neither Jew or Greek. Uh, did you see it in your Bible? So don't say I'm, I'm, I'm black or white. There's, in, those, in this kingdom, you are not any of this. He said, there's neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you, if you be Christ, then are you also Abraham's seed and hers according to the promise. If you are Christ, then are you also Abraham? We started with Abraham. You look at where Abraham is and look at where we are. And in between Abraham and us is Christ. That is the link. Oh, Labaga Shikata. Between the old and the new. We are also Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. We are connected to Abraham by the blood of Jesus. But I want to tell you something before we pray because we are about to leave. In 1 John chapter 1, if you look at verse 1, it says, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which our hand, which we have looked upon, and our hands have hand handled of the word of life, Christ. That which was from the beginning, which we have seen. Oh, la baga shikata baba. Ba. Look at verse 3. He said, that which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you the things that we have seen and heard, which is Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. We declare unto you, Jesus is the life of man. That is the life that we need to have because we have to wear him. We have to become that life that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Look at verse 7. He said, but if you walk in the light, as he is the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sins. If you walk in the light today, and Jesus is that light. We are one. Let the blood begin to cleanse you today. Let the blood begin to saturate you. Because once we are one with Christ, we are Christ now. Acts chapter 17, 28, the Bible says, For in him we live and move and have our being. In him we live. In him we move. And in him we have our being. He is the same today. Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Let the power of the generational God, the ability of the old and of the new come upon you today. Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive power. If you have received Jesus Christ, begin to manifest Jesus. Everywhere you go, Christ shall be made manifest. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. I'm going to pray with you right now. If you are among us, the first thing is to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, if we confess the Lord Jesus Christ 
and believe in our heart that he died and resurrected, we shall be saved. So I want you to say, Lord Jesus Christ, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. And I believe in my heart that you died and resurrected for my sins. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Jesus Christ, come into my life. What is this that you want God to do for you? What is it that you want God to do for you right now? As I pray, let God begin to make it happen for you. Oh, la bagashika tabalika na mama. If you are sick any form or way, lay your hand upon your head and let the power of God come upon you right now from the crown of your head to the sole of your foot. Let the power of God be released unto you right now. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Healing come upon you right now. Whatever it is that is called sickness, the Bible says the name of Jesus is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. At the mention of Jesus Christ, every knee shall bow. You need to go get a job. You want to get some good job today. Christ can give it to you. He looked at them in Matthew 20. He said, Who, what are you doing? They said, nobody has hired us. He said, go into the labor and work. And what is good, I'll give to you. I said, from today, you will never lack any it's in job. One business, the ideas are coming upon you. That God will begin to open you up for business because he said, occupy until I come. Luke 19, do business until I come. That's what Jesus said. So the ability to do business and succeed in it has been given. Receive it. Even Matthew 25, the Bible says he gave them five talents and two and one. And to every man, according to his several ability. Oh, Rabaga, Shikata, Bababa. Receive the power of the Holy Ghost right now. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. What a wonderful week we have started. As we go forward, I will see you back tomorrow. I love you with all my heart. But above all, Jesus loves you the more. God bless you. Amen.